I'm the Gorgeous Gamer, and this is a taste of co-op edition, where I give you a sample of a game in co-op mode to help you decide if it's right for you and your friends to purchase. Today we sample Dying Light Enhanced Edition, which along with the main campaign includes a season pass that unlocks multiple DLCs, the expansion, the following, and skins and blueprints. Dying Light is a survivor, first-person action game set in a zombie post-apocalyptic world of a quarantined city. You must scavenge the city looking for supplies and weapons to survive while ultimately trying to find the cure and the cause of the outbreak. What's super unique about Dying Light is its day-night cycle and parkour style of traveling, which allows you to traverse across the skyline of the ruined city all while fighting and avoiding hordes of undead. Just look at the cityscape. The details of the environment, the zombie models shambling around, everything looks so grounded in realism. The cycling between day and night adds a nice touch in both of terms of graphics and settings. As the sun begins to set, you see the orange glow in the sky, signaling you to basically wrap up whatever your current objectives are and find a safe zone, otherwise face the consequences of night. And then night hits. And a few city lights that are still working flicker on and the game turns into a full-fledged horror as you see shadows of movement of zombies. It's just really cool that the game forces you to flicker on your flashlight just to get your bearings, which then in turn triggers a whole bunch of other effects. The models of the zombies are unique and cool. That hacking and slashing at zombies to see their limbs or heads lop off or gush and gore is incredibly satisfying and it looks great. And as you unlock new skills and weapons and various abilities, you're treated to even more animations uh, to kill or dismember zombies. The ragdoll effects and explosions are incredibly rewarding to watch. And the cutscenes are also really well done. They, they seamlessly flow directly from the gameplay. Don't, don't disturb me. No, I, I, I pray. Been, 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 been trying all the day to get it right. Shit! Hey, it's okay. I didn't, I didn't mean to bother you. Creepy, scary, everything you'd want in a survival horror game. You just feel it all the entire time. The screams of volatiles in the darkness as they're alerted to your presence. It's chilling. And the constant change of tempo and music as you become hunted by them, or even chased relentlessly in broad daylight by runners, just keeps the intensity up all the time. The sound of gunfire hitting and popping a zombie head, so satisfying, or the quick slash of a knife cutting into the body, and even the heavy swings of a two-handed weapon. It's just the effort it takes to run or attack as you grow tired and weaker. It's all conveyed in the sound of this game. My favorite sound by far, the ground stomp ability. The, the squish of a zombie head under boot never gets old. Driving the buggy in the expansion, the following added even more stimulation as you burst through fences, plow through zombie hordes, and you have the zombies running to catch up to you, jumping onto your buggy, screaming at you as they try and claw through the cage to get to you. Uh, and then there's Kyle, our protagonist. He's voiced by Roger Craig Smith. The performance is great. I mean, you, you feel the confusion, anger, fear, love. Every time Kyle opens his mouth, it's conveyed perfectly. Uh, the voice acting, really, with all of the NPCs, all of the characters, is so good. It just adds the realism and quality to this game you're looking for. And it's nice to see that a game gives every NPC a voice and not just, uh, you know, the main characters. You walk by the dude in the hallway and he's got something to say. And more often than not, it's something different each time.
while survival, zombie, apocalyptic, horror isn't really an original concept, Dying Light definitely adds its own flavor, especially in the DLC and expansion. It finds its own world out there. Uh, from adding variants on mutations uh, to the way you get around the entire map. I, I won't spoil anything regarding the main storyline or expansions or even the DLCs, but all of them were really a thrill to play and even the majority of side quests had a weight to them and uniqueness that just made it really interesting interacting with the characters within. Uh, like AC and The Witcher, some of the most memorable moments and characters came from side quests. My favorite happened to be the two genius twin brothers you help in both the campaign and expansion. These two are regularly cooking up some sort of wily e. Coyote style plan of escaping the quarantine zone and naturally you are the brawn to their brain. And of course they speak to you as if you are the dumbest person on the planet but you can't help but love them because they're so funny as they're talking to you. It's, it's dialogue like one of the brothers saying Kyle, knock three times and we'll know it's you. And then the other brother immediately cutting him off and chiming in, no, 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 don't make Kyle count. You know it'll only confuse him. It's stories like that that get you really engaged and trapped into it versus go to X, find Y, return to Z. Having these unique characters puts a nice spin on that simple formula. And the following expansion really surprised me with its content and story. It felt richer, deeper, even than the main campaign, which was really fun for an expansion. The only parts of the story I couldn't really get into really weren't the story, but the randomly thrown in time challenges. They just didn't feel right in the game and they got a little bit repetitive and old. The only exception to that were the killing challenges, which always added a unique twist to the challenge. Like, for example, at one point you are given this prototype electric Rambo blade, which one shots and explodes zombies. Now I could do that all day long. Once you get the hang of parkouring, grappling, and driving, you fall in love with how quickly you can get anywhere on the map in the game. Given there's no fast travel, at first I was a little worried that that would get old and it would fade quickly, but you know, exploring and flying across the city or taking a buggy through fields and smashing through hordes of zombies, it, it never got old. And it is so quick that you don't really notice that you can't fast travel after a while. The diversity of weapons, how they feel when you swing and connect, how they damage a zombie when they do connect is super satisfying. Uh, and as you upgrade further, you can add elemental damage, which even further makes these poor zombie saps just get slaughtered. Uh, my favorite of one of the side objects is the C4, which you can just throw out a few charges, go loud with a gun, it lures a bunch of zombies, and then click, boom, zombie body parts everywhere. The limited ammo and find out repairs to a weapon really keep you on your toes, making sure that you don't blow through ammo too quickly, and that you always have a spare weapon in your inventory or set up in your hotkeys in case one of them breaks and you need to repair or you're out of repairs. Melee never becomes obsolete as well. Even though you get weapons like rifles and bows and grenades and crossbows, if you go loud, you quickly get overwhelmed. And the game does a great job of continuing to put the pressure on you and overwhelm you that you're forced to retreat because you're not gonna win ultimately. And even in co-op with a second player, Chris and I got too zealous on a number of times and paid the price by going loud too early. The skills and abilities really help advance whatever play style you want, um, whether it comes from your movements, your attack, and even helping general passives like simply getting fatigued slower by running or jumping. The combat skills were especially fun though. Choosing between things like insta-killing zombies from above a la Assassin's Creed, or going full WWE and drop kicking a zombie off a building, or into another crowd of zombies knocking them all over like bowling pins. Chris and I really tried to make sure we chose different abilities and skills. That way we could really experience each one of them to see what was best. 
but ultimately XP was given out fair enough that by the time we finished the main campaign, we had enough to almost max every single skill tree until we went into the following, which unlocked the new driving skill tree, which allows you to trick out your buggy with things like armor, UV lights, and even flamethrowers. Or my favorite, which is an electrical grid for protection. So anytime a zombie jumps on you, poof, they instantly explode. Finally, the crafting system is really fun. You find all sorts of blueprints around the city. If you get the enhanced edition, you get a bunch of other blueprints already in your inventory. And you find scraps all around the city from either dismembering components or just finding them randomly. And then you can craft new weapons and add damage and add even elemental damage to these weapons. Um, so blueprints are all over everything from, you know, adding fire to your knife to, you know, something silly like crafting a garden gnome. It's a deep, rich system that allows you to basically level up and play with multiple styles of weapons and wield them in different ways. Pros, a fun zombie killing game, especially for co-op. The style of play and adding the parkour to it really makes the game enjoyable and flow well. I never felt stuck not being able to fast travel or bored exploring through the city, whether it's, you know, zip lining across, grappling or driving. The vast amounts of weapons and the way they are used and how differently they feel when you use them really helped with not getting bored just killing endless models of zombies. Uh, the community is still really active uh, for a six-year-old game. A brand new DLC came out for free in June, and community events are still a regular thing that are being released for you to get new blueprints and skins and weapons. Cons. Like any game with a ton of enemies, you're bound to see some repetitive models. That didn't get too bored with me. Even though within the first hour or two, you've likely seen pretty much all the variations except for the bosses and specific mutations. Uh, the main problem I did say is the parkouring was sometimes a bit clunky and unreliable. Certain things like they seemed like you should be able to climb on or could climb on, you'd grapple or jump to, and it would result in death. In fact, I say Chris and I died more times from falling than zombies. Um, also, minor clipping issues sometimes with climbing, getting stuck but um, or hung up on invisible things. And the zombie ragdoll effects, as you can imagine, sometimes end up in some hilarity as zombies died or flew around and got stuck in buildings. And the only other minor complaint I would say is that sometimes NPCs were really chatty. I don't want to hear your life story just for you to give me a quest to go to the grocery store and try and find some food for the shelter. Um, but otherwise, that's really it. No issues with freezing or crashes or anything of that nature, or even bugs with quests given the sheer volume of quests there were.